Awesome. Here we go. So welcome, everybody. We will start up for some break of the, the Hyperledger Global Summit early September. So pleasure to start second part of the season here, 2022. And don't want to lose too much time. I say I would love to hand it to my colleague here, Tom Klein from Chicago, to recap on what happened during the Hyperledger Global Forum to give you <coughs> Uh, quick outlook and what went on and what are the news from the Global Forum. Then we will hand over to my friend Kim Lash. We'll talk about blockchain and sustainable development goals and tokenization. So Tom, stage is yours. Step in. Thank you very much. And uh, Andrea probably uh, went a little overboard there since I was not in Dublin, nor is Andrea, nor is Eric. Uh, but Kim Lash, I believe you were there, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I was there. So, you, so you'll be able to provide more on the ground kind of thing here. Yeah, but I'm gonna... So he's the main guy today here. Come Lash. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so let me so, let me just so, uh, share a couple things here, Come Lash, before you get started. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So first off, all are welcome. Thanks for joining here on uh, a fun Thursday to hear Come Lash talk about. Uh, and share their presentation from the Global Forum, as well as a little bit of on the ground as we just talked about. Uh, so we're glad you're here. Antitrust, the normal Linux Foundation, please don't share uh, competitive information that you don't want out there in public since this is a public forum uh, here, but we're all, we're all glad you're here. There is this thing, announcements. Um, let's see here. Uh, myself, Andrea, as well as Eric, as well as Alicia Noel, have been uh, talking every Tuesday on how do we take this to the next level here. And we're thinking about ways that others can get involved. And so you see there some SIG event planning, um, taking meeting notes on a meeting like today here, uh, making event flyers, which is something Andrea does right now, other suggestions. There's plenty of ways to get involved. So we're throwing it out there just as an initial, and hopefully we're gonna have some more uh, opportunities here coming forward and into 2023. Uh, a few events here. And then lastly, before I turn it over to you, Kamlesh, here is uh, what I did is I went through what the sessions at Hyperledger Global Forum in Dublin and the ones that were supply chain and or trade finance had, had some applicability. Kamlesh is, is one of them. <laughs> That's good. Um, here, I found 11 of them here, and you see the list here. They are not up on YouTube yet. Uh, one of them is up on YouTube. I have the link here, number seven, Saudi Aramco Procure to Pay Ecosystem. You can look at that uh, session. Uh, down below is a chart from that session that I uh, copied and pasted. It was actually a very nice story that uh, they told where it was similar a little bit to actually the Walmart can story in that uh, services contracts were over 100 pages and trying to get all that contractual stuff reconciled when invoices were presented was taking two to three months so people weren't getting paid, uh, which is not a good thing. And these contracts can be over the very long period of time, like five or 10 years. And so they built a system at Sony Ramco for procure to pay with services specifically that they were they onboarded 11 vendors and they were able to take down their um, time from two to three months down to two to eight days to actually pay and really make any uh, disputes into a rare occurrence. So there's an example of a good story uh, that was shared at Global Forum. And what, I, what we'll do is once all these things get up on uh, YouTube uh, there, then I'll create links here in the wiki so that everyone can find these or we'll create a play playlist there so that you can just look at them all and you don't have to figure out what's going on. So with that, Kamlesh, I'm gonna turn it over to you right now, okay? And I will stop sharing so that you can share your screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. So I think as usual, like uh, Hyperledger Global Forums events are really extremely well and well managed and lots of learning. Uh, from the event, so so uh, is there a long, I think, three day uh, kind of event. There's a multiple keynote session from industry, from Danila, from uh, Accenture, 
and uh, from the production deployment even the some failure stories so great to see the this uh, v dot trade story like how how the their trade network felt and what the learning they shared i think this will be released soon so so all has a very good understanding and what is happening globally and what are the different use cases and uh, if i share the three most learning of the program first is uh, uh, from the event first is kind of how how much you can share the what is community building on on blockchain on the hybrid technology second aspect like how to uh, how to how to work on the traditional new uh, new things like for example tokenization in hyper ledger or metaverse kind of use cases or interoperability in, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, more adoption of the technology and third like how the community come together and share what they are building and what they have done and what they are uh, uh, kind of road map for the future so it's always good to uh, attend hyper is a global forum event in person so uh, so especially i i talked a couple of sessions the same topic so this is one of the my global forum presentation similar topic i was a part of the panel discussion with uh, danela and the circular ceo and uh, nancy from british columbia to talk about sustainability in blockchain and all this stuff so this uh things we have done so let me go to the presentation we will talk like how the blockchain could play a very important role in sustainability in supply chain and uh, achieving the sdg goals and the use case related to the climate and carbon credit and how is never future tech is my company doing in the particular uh, uh vertical come less real fast before you go on to the next page here uh, just in yeah. case anybody is on here and is looking for the media and entertainment uh, session, that uh, move to a different Zoom link, which you, if you scroll up in the chat, you'll be able to see and you can go over there. And that's where uh, the presentation discussion on media and entertainment is right now. So uh, with that, Kamlesh, I'll turn it back to you. Yeah, okay, thank you. So I think, so we'll start with the climate change. So we everyone understand the climate aspect and, and that's why in the hyperledger community we have separate climate action and accounting working group like we have the state finance and supply chain so in the climate perspective we understand the climate change importance like how the global warming how the weather condition and how the how the we see the uh, european countries so much warm so much so much temperature going up and so how, so and how it will impact the uh, climate and the environment in the future and uh, that's why the sdg sustainable development goals by the united nations come in the picture they define like we need to reduce the carbon footprint we need to uh, take action for the climate change so that is a story about the climate and that's why the paris agreement which just talk about it or what those different 17 sustainability development goals all is play a very important role and and this topic is presentation about like how the blockchain could help to achieve this SDG goals and especially the sustainable supply chain and carbon accounting and climate uh, actions related use cases. So uh, these are the different 17 sustainability development goals decided by United Nations. So like no poverty, zero hunger, uh, the quality education, gender equality, clean water, and the number of things. So especially blockchain could. Uh, play very important in roles of the affordable and clean energy. There are lots of use cases in terms of like P2P energy or uh, energy certificate, renewable certificate. And then uh, sustainable, 12 is a responsible consumption and production where the sustainable supply chain come in the picture. And then 13 is about the climate action, about the carbon accounting, carbon emission footprint on all these use cases and the rest of the other other things, other you, other sustainable development also can be taken care of by the uh, blockchain, where like some social or environment ESG goals kind of thing. But I am especially talking about this this three goals: affordable and clean energy, responsible consumption and production, and climate action. And, uh, and when we talk about the 
sustainability and sdg goals we see all this picture about the global warming carbon offset co2 emission carbon footprint kyoto protocol and all the all the kind of thing which is literally the sustainability aspect renewable energy climate change the co2 trade so all these things in, the, in terms of energy efficiency and all this is related to the climate action and climate change so uh this is for the goal number 12 sustainable development goals goal number 12 and goal number 13 so 12 is like about the how how you measure the your carbon footprint in any supply chain how much the process are you using in terms of sustainability aspect like so uh, completely digital digital trade paperless trade for example so you will say we you are saving in terms of carbon footprint saving in terms of your paperwork and also how quickly you are uh, settling your trade that means you are also uh, uh, solving the your uh, buyer to sub supplier to buyer uh, uh, buyer transition time and all, all which impact the uh, carbon footprint saving and then other like uh, what is sustainability practices are for example suppose if you uh, transporting or maybe doing the trade finance trade of the particular agriculture food for example agricultural crop so how the agriculture crops are create uh, manufacture or maybe produce uh, what kind of fertilizer what kind of uh, pesticide and even in the supply chain what kind of uh, fuel they are using all those could be recorded and uh, can be created some kind of carbon footprint saving so even we are doing one of the project in the plastic recycle segment i will cover that in detail later another is some related to use case about the climate so like how you measure the your uh uh climate actions for example like if you if you having some solution to uh, recycle the plastic or recycle the some e waste so if using this and this thing that that means you are saving some kind of carbon footprint in terms of it impacting the climate so how to measure those those kind of parameters and create some kind of sustainable finance model some kind of green bond for example or some kind of uh, tokenize of the your carbon footprint and create another uh, second layer marketplace for trading of this carbon credit and even this carbon credit create as a bond say some kind of your mutual fund so there are there are couple of uh, 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 sustainable finance use cases coming in this uh, particular sector so uh, in the climate space space if you are not uh, if you are you are having some actions but if you are not accounting those actions in some sort of digital then it will it will it will challenge to actually achieving your target like for example your target to maybe reduce the uh, carbon net zero by 2030 but if you are not accounting the your best practices or not accounting your uh, measures then then it's not viable or not uh, valuable in terms of your carbon footprint uh, saving and another another thing like uh, uh, how the blockchain could play because there are number of multi uh, parties of uh, work in this space and if you are not using some kind of blt blockchain space then how you could bring the trust Uh, of the all your uh, carbon accounting or climate accounting so so blockchain will play in terms of recording all this uh, climate actions measurements and then accounting the carbon footprint saving and then tokenizing it and create some kind of sustainable or some kind of green financing model out of it so this is all about this is i taken from the hyperledger climate action accounting sig so uh blockchain actually is a fundamentally a technology of trust and uh, that trust actually comes via the uh, technology of itself like how you create a block you can't temper the data you could trust the data available in the blockchain because it's shared by the multiple nodes and that's why if you recording any kind of uh, your carbon or climate footprint uh, measurement on a blockchain based system so who in the party can trust those data and then uh, the consumer or the buyer supplier who are in the network of the supply chain could consider the data is uh, trustful 
and another aspect the esg angle so uh, there are uh, environment social and governance is very important to achieve the sustainability aspect so there are multiple use cases and companies and startups uh, having a use cases around like how you measure the your uh, esg goals because, because like because this esg is mandated by the government so or but but how the companies and corporates following those things is a still uh, challenge the blockchain could play that role and uh, uh, could come it contribute to the larger ecosystem of the uh, of the like carbon emission footprint and then uh, all other aspect of the of the environment like esg reporting for example so i categorize the use cases in couple of categories like one is renewable energy another is climate change another is esg reporting and then last is circular economy or sort of sustainable supply chain where where our this particular working group can relate so renewable energy aspect so there are renewable energy certificates tokenization of energy or peer to peer energy trading uh, so the, in this category there are number of use cases by if you heard about the uh, power ledger uh, the companies based in australia are doing such projects in different government uh, even we did one of the project for the european customer who having a uh, micro solar uh, setup in rural india and how how they are uh, first recording the carbon footprint saving while consumer using this renewable energy and then tokenizing those renewable energy certificates so this kind of use cases is largely happening another is uh, i mentioned about the like uh, climate accounting like what are the measures like for example suppose you do some kind of forestation so generally forestation is a great example or great thing to be uh, stop the co2 emit even it will create the more oxygen but 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 is there any way to record or is there any trust on the data provided by the companies like they say like they maybe a forest of 1 million tree but there is no authenticity or no transparency so so there are couple of use cases in this particular category uh, another like carbon accounting and credit tokenization in all the aspects whether is the supply chain uh, whether is the greenhouse gas emission saving or what are the different uh, different areas where the carbon emissions are saved it could be it could be such sustainable agriculture the sustainable supply chain or what are the different use cases come in the picture and then car offset and creating the this tokens as a carbon offset nft so people are using the nft nft theory also here to so to create this carbon footprint saving is a nft as a token and that could be traded so so uh, there are there are number of use cases available that i will cover in the next slide another is the esg reporting of the transparent and efficient efficiency is reported in voluntary carbon footprint responsible sourcing so like there is a one good use case by ibm and couple of mineral companies they have set up the responsible sourcing uh, supply chain and they they even measure the in this particular mineral industry uh, who are the workers whether they are child labor whether they are getting fair wages or all this could be recorded and then create some kind of data out, out of it and that could be used as a sustainable perspective and another which is a broader area uh, as per the particular uh, this group so uh, this is a supply chain for example sustainable agriculture supply chain or uh, e waste and plastic recycle supply chain so like uh, there are there are there are there are plastic recycle properly chain there are there are e waste there are uh, battery recycling and then supply chain decarbonization so uh, in the your particular supply chain at the what are the steps you could measure your carbon footprint saving and then suppose if you put some data about your product like for this particular product maybe saving this carbon uh, this that much carbon footprint saving and then you can attract more customer to what that product compared to the other products which don't have that data so so in the supply chain perspective the use cases are coming in this aspect where people are recording the carbon footprint saving and showing at the product level like how much this particular product is uh, 
uh, saved your carbon footprint saving. And if you buy this product, then you are contributing to some kind of carbon uh, emission saving. And other aspects like plastic e-waste or recycle. So, so even they are got properly mended by government, like extended for district responsibility. So for example, if you are a plastic manufacturer, plastic bottle manufacturer, then you need to recycle whatever the, you are manufacturing it. So these are the set by the different various government regulatory bodies. So, and that's why the brand or the e-waste or plastic recycler companies will want to come up with some trusted and transparent ecosystem where all the players come in the picture, right? Regulator, brand, and uh, plastic recycler, or the even the, uh, the recycler, uh, garbage collectors in the same picture. And then even, even uh, some kind of creating the tokens out of it and then people can buy it outside. So even we are working with uh, uh, one of the customer in uh, India for the plastic recycle traceability and then uh, tokenizing that carbon uh, footprint saving via this plastic recycle. And there are a number of use cases in the battery. And while the electric electrical vehicle uh, adoption or maybe users are increasing, then this particular use case is also more emerged because we have lots of batteries to recycle and uh, measure the carbon footprint saving out of this those things. So this number of the use cases are there. So this I talked about the say, uh, one thing here. If you could go back to your chart there, just for the the audience, uh, if you're interested in any of the the accounting, specifically carbon accounting that Kamlesh talked about, we had a session with SAP Green Token back. I think it was in May or so. And you're welcome to go back. The recording is out there and available. You can learn more about that specifically in addition to what Kamlesh will say going forward here. Yes, it was, you, you were right, Tom, by the way, it was me and May when we guessed the speech by James Steele of Green Token. Yes. Yeah, correct, correct. So Green Board is another, another, another example. So, so this sustainability angle is uh, everywhere. Is just not the supply chain, it's just not the climate, but in the even finance space. So recently in India, we won one of the sustainable finance uh, uh, hackathon where we presented the similar case like how how we are uh, tracking the plastic uh, plastic uh, recycle and then how we created the carbon token and then beyond that how you could this token is a uh, some kind of uh, uh, investment asset some kind of finance asset and even the normal consumer instead of uh, the carbon offset people who are interested in the particular sustainability aspect they can even invest uh, and and this is a, like green board is one of the example which uh, India and Eric is mentioning. So we provide link to the green token. So uh, okay. So I just talk about the use cases, but now I will talk about some success stories in all the categories I discovered last. So. In a carbon credit tokenization, so if you heard about this Nori, Nori protocol, this is a carbon remover marketplace, and you see the number. So there are how many projects? Seventeen plus projects are there. There are one one point eight million dollar of uh, uh, carbon offset exchange. There are a number of this thing, and then this flow carbon is one of the another carbon credit uh, marketplace in the blockchain. There's the Klima DAO, which is the which is kind of uh, creating the carbon tokens and even creating some digital currency backed by this real carbon offset asset. And World Bank is also having some kind of carbon off, off, offset in terms of this uh, finance background. This below two use cases uh, is from India. So in India, there are couple of use cases in the sustainable agriculture aspect where because India is an uh, agriculture driven economy is still we have around 70% uh, uh, farmers in India. So, so, so in sustainable agriculture perspective, uh, how these companies are using sustainable agriculture as their carbon accounting and then, then, uh, then tokenizing it. So this is the, uh, Sustainability blockchain token, Kichi called it. And another is a carbon NFT on food supply chain. 
uh, called Bhu. So all this is in production in India. Another in the renewable energy sector, so like the first is is my customer Bitumix, where they have their setup of uh, green technologies or green uh, uh, kind of solar solar energy panels in India, and they have smart metering uh, to set up at the household level, and then uh, how how they are measuring the carbon uh, carbon emissions or carbon savings while consumer or farmers or rural people are using this renewable energy instead of the normal coal or water, water energy and then if they are using this particular energy then how much the carbon they are saving and then tokenizing this carbon data so this thing and uh, there are already uh, ready-made data available in terms of for example suppose if you're using the normal energy whether it's water or coal so how much carbon emission it emits and if you use it instead of the solar energy, then you can easily compare or easily calculate the carbon emission saving. So this is typically still data available. Another is Power Ledger. So this is Austrian bank company. They are using lots of use cases in terms of uh, P2P energy trading or energy certificate. When they did some project in India with Ministry of Power and uh, Smart Gate Foundation, there are Energy Web Foundation. They have number of use cases in terms of renewable energy certificate marketplace in Central America. And these are some circular use, circular economy use cases, especially in the waste management. So even there are circularized, there is a recycle go, there is a circular, there is ever ledger, there is a my company also. So there are number of use cases in uh, plastic, e-waste and battery. So first, project is record, recording all the carbon emission footprints and then tokenizing those data. And another kind of uh, fulfilling the SDG goals set by the brand, like extended produce of this quantity, like for example, whatever the e-waste or plastic you are manufacturing, then uh, you need to recycle all those things. And this is there, there are lots of work required because currently there's no transparent data about the, and the brand don't have picture clarity, like uh, whether whether they are getting the certificate of whether it's uh, plastic recycle that is correct or not because currently whoever in the plastic recycler they give some kind of support they possess maybe one million bottles or maybe one million metric ton plastic but there is no genuine or trusted data so and that's why brands and the regulator need some kind of transparency and where come the transparency then blockchain is a very good technology to achieve that piece and then some use cases in sustainable supply chain. Previous is the waste management especially, like plate, battery, plastic, or e-waste. Another is uh, some kind of sustainability aspect in supply chain, like for example, whether there is a mining, whether there is some kind of uh, uh, fashion, forest to fashion supply chain, whether the de deforestation or even like a, a measure the carbon footprint saving at the each step of the supply chain so even for that there are there are there are data there is a standard process available like while while you uh, transporting one good from the another good another location then as per the your sustainability your supply chain data like uh, what kind of vehicle what kind of the transport medium are you using how much time it will take all these parameters is standard data available and this particular solutions are uh, using those data and creating the some sustainability data about it. There, there are a number of use cases in like mineral supply chain, like there's the IBM, there is a Ford, there is a Arsys Global. They created the, some kind of uh, mineral supply chain responsible uh, uh, mineral data. And there are a number of use cases. There are about two use cases by one of the fashion, uh, India Fashion Detail uh, Group. Aditya Birla group and they have they have like cellulose one of the fibers from nature and then uh, they're creating a kind of uh, sustainability and sustainable data about the, how the particular fiber are uh, transported or everything and and the tag with the particular brand product and there are number of number of use cases in the like cotton uh, even the levels burn or a couple of customers using in India, where they have end-to-end -end accessibility of uh, 
particular so even this is one i think uh, for i think at least one one month old data and if you see there are more than 350 plus projects already available where blockchain is used uh, to achieve the sustainability in different aspect whether it is esg with uh, ethical supply chain whether it is agri supply chain or food safety through supply chain pharmaceutical supply chain so if you go to this particular link i have given here you could uh, every week really new new projects uh, added to their repository so in the fourth week september it was around uh, for september around three projects and i think mostly in the last four weeks there may be 20 30 more added so so you can see the impact of blockchain and how the people are using the blockchain in sustainability uh, aspect so uh, any any question here or shall i continue till end of the presentation or we can take it at the, the last any questions out there for kamlesh okay. okay so, so uh, yeah kamlesh you know, govind here Uh, so there are, you know, ESG wise, you know, there are a few protocols, uh, country to country. You know, we have specific protocols and policies. Uh, so here, uh, are we adhering to any policies, uh, process, anything? So you mean talking about this Bayran Gold Standard kind of thing? Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. So, so there are there are even multiple things. So one thing people doing what? What are the where i am gold standard data available in terms of the respective project people are tokenizing those data so and creating the carbon credit tokens out of it that is one thing but still uh, uh, for example like agriculture space there is no any standards are currently available so people are deriving the new uh, new one the standards around it like for example suppose what kind of soil it is and what kind of uh, fertilizer using what kind of pesticide they are using then if they are using this way then how much the carbon footprint saving so this kind of data is still uh, standards not available people are building and defining on and another for example like supply chain for example so like suppose if you in for example suppose in india for example you transporting some goods from delhi to mumbai so how you will measure the particular products carbon footprint emission whether you can relate like whether they are using diesel or petrol or uh, cng gas vehicle or how much time it take and what kind of people involved so all those data is very raw and but but i think there is still there are some kind of standardization coming in this aspect there are some already data available where you just simply put the your uh, uh, certain data which will give the carbon footprint is a benchmark thanks kamlesh the final thing is you know how about the gdpr compliance you know how are we meeting so i think in block so i think gdpr compliance can actually achieve because if you heard about some data data collection or private data concept in all the blockchain so and private channel for example so all this you could achieve by the the technology itself that i think no need to be worry about the gdpr compliance and that that you how you define and design your uh, blockchain infrastructure blockchain network yeah thank you very much uh, kamlesh yeah so uh, so here is some case studies which we had that did for the customer so this is this is the one we did for one of the plastic recyclers based in india so for that actually we are tra tracking end to end of plastic recycle collection to till uh, waste aggregator and then recycler and brand and then tokenizing it in in our uh, blockchain product called trust chain and and the similar product could be used for whether e waste or battery recycling because in all the aspects the supply chain is same and the guidelines and the regulatory is the same like epr kind of thing extended for this responsibility so uh, what are the like for the oem there is a 
there's a best aggregator there's a recycler there's a manufacturing there's a product all can be your blockchain network participant and uh, you just record all the parameter and then uh, get agree all the participant node on the particular data watch what is updating in the blockchain and then uh, tokenize those data in terms of like how much carbon footprint for example suppose if you in the plastic bin plasticbin.com that particular project i think started by ibm and it is for the millions of plastic bottles they recycled and they clearly tag the like if you uh, recycling one plastic bottle then how much carbon footprint you are saving so similarly you can cal- calculate in terms of the plastic and e-waste battery so and this actually we won the one of the hackathon where we are becoming a part of their uh, kind of uh, sustainable finance group so in the first part we are simply doing the waste recycling process in to end like material collection to till uh, carbon credit certificate but that is a non non tokenization part but in the later part like green finance we have the green token so similarly all the data what we are recording here we are using another another blockchain network like uh, there is a polygon whether it is a public blockchain and then creating a tokens some kind of sustainable tokens out of it whatever the carbon footprints and carbon credit we generated here and then you could create a completely your uh, green financing sustainable finance model like people can uh, invest in this token and then they directly could contribute to this uh, left hand side piece or if left hand side is already in place then they can create this kind of tokens and uh, uh, consumer or investor institutional investor can buy this tokens on the thing so this kind of thing and the similar thing could be applicable for other aspect like renewable energy for example there is one my friends company in india they have they invest in a sustainable they invest in mending solar panels or solar macro grid setup and and then for the funded consumer side they created some kind of green financing platform kind of thing that people invest in this tokens they invest in a, this uh, solar panels solar solar project the similar thing can be done so and this is this is typical this certain supply chain like Working all the aspect like uh, first like waste recycling, material tracking, then EPR certificate, which is the government organic tracking whether the particular EPR is genuine or not, and then carbon footprint recording, then carbon tokenization, and all other things like ESG and compliance reporting come in the all this end to end thing. Even like uh, if you uh, recycling the plastic, then even you can tag the particular product like this product is made via uh, plastic recycle. So all those things. So, and this actually we did for one of the uh, renewable energy uh, uh, solution company in Europe. So they having a, a micro grid or solar panel set up in India, and rural rural India or farmers are using this particular energy generated by this uh, solar solar panel solar project. so in the project in the how to measure the carbon footprint saving so we set up some kind of smart meters at the consumer side and we are recording the energy utilization and all the other other parameters about the about, about the farmer about their economic condition all those things and then tokenizing uh, this particular data and even also bringing the secondary market place some kind of sustainable token aspect as they can people can invest in this token and directly even uh, invest or grant or charity to the farmers who are not poor or who are poor in particular uh, kind of space so this is some kind of thing we did for one of the european customer and that is live in actually india this set up something in rajasthan uh, one of the state in india and and all these projects are using the hyperledger technology actually so this is a typical uh, uh, particular product uh, solution diagram like suppose there is a smart meter so we recording all the consumption data from the meter log and log and uh, all the car- carbon calculation of the carbon emissions and everything and then 
certifying this carbon credit and then in the left left and green piece is about the token tokenizing those uh, carbon emission saving and then similar similar how you can trade this particular carbon footprint or carbon credit token so that we did via our uh, tracing which is asset tracing and provenance of some of the chain product where the number of uh, stakeholders that grow over to consumer are there and this is modify accordingly whether we are tracking or traceability of plastic or whether we are tracking the traceability of a uh, food food supply chain and this is last so uh, so in the this so in the hyperledger we have a hyperledger climate action accounting sig climate sig actually we can say so there are number of a number of different projects and different initiatives are there and one initiative is the supply chain decarbonization so and uh, recently uh, we uh, hyper climate action accounting group actually pa participated in the igin call for code there is a green practice accelerator and given the the particular uh, call for code uh, Uh, in a a program when we got some kind of uh, uh some kind of grant for the particular we so this the particular use cases are for in the in the carbon accounting then you can look into the particular criteria climate sig the supply chain decarbonization thank you thank you So, so any question okay thank you kamlesh for uh sharing the the overview as well as specifically what you guys have worked on there that's great uh i was having some problems at the end it might be just on mine uh where you you're a little fuzzy so if uh, folks heard that great it was just me or if not then uh maybe there's some questions uh that you want to ask of Kamlesh either on that or something a little bit earlier. So I'll turn it all over to the floor here and see if there's anybody who has any questions. So so uh, even I will share this presentation say that again. I am saying I will share this presentation which you can upload uh, in your wiki page. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, that that is that's great. Yes. And, uh, please you please do. Since the meeting is over, come last so I can upload it onto also onto the LinkedIn site for everybody to access it and take a look at that. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of for contribution, community contributions, you know how how we can able to participate and contribute. So, uh, so if you uh, for the climate thing if you go to visit this hyperledger wiki of this climate action accounting thing so there are number of different initiatives uh in supply chain decarbonization carbon accounting and and there are multiple suppose if you are not technical then you can con contribute in terms of standard and business practice or uh, some kind of business perspective like in the supply chain for example another thing if you have your some development team or maybe some developer in this then already this particular log box in carbon accounting network is now live there are number of new enhancement or new things we have we are doing there so you can contribute that that too so we actually meet uh, every by week like uh, we are meeting to the supply chain network so this is uh, open i think anybody can join the meeting and participate whether they are working in the similar space whether they want to technical contribution whether they want to do some kind of uh, uh business perspective like how supply chain decarbonization in carbon accounting space work i think uh, is a, is a kind of collaborative i think every uh, monday i believe i think i think every tuesday by by weekly tuesday they have meeting yeah okay okay
Okay, good. Any other uh, questions out there? Good question. I like the, uh, the participation or kind of contribute uh, kind of question there. And there's lots of opportunities. So anybody else out there before we wrap up? Okay, going once, going twice, going three times. Again, thank you for uh, joining here on Thursday or joining via the recording. Uh, Kamlesh, thanks for sharing a little bit of what you saw there in Dublin, as well as your uh, your experience there. And I liked I liked the ESG intelligence thing there, um, blockchain for sustainability weekly. So I'm going to go look look that up here after uh, this session here. So with that, let's close things out. Enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are. Kamlesh, thanks for uh, joining late in India. Uh, since you won the, win the prize, I guess is late. And uh, we'll talk with you next time. I believe the 20th of October is our next session. So look yeah, for us. Yeah, 20th of October, Tom, correct. We're going to have another very interesting meeting, by the way. So thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Thanks, Kim Lash. Remember, yeah. please to share the slide yeah. back, back slides. So I give everybody an appointment in two weeks' time more good contents from the happy life supply chain and trade fund say beautiful thank you bye everybody bye everybody bye everybody bye bye